The Efficacy of the Fear of Hell to Restrain Men from Sin by Solomon Stoddard Part 2 4. It would be a great benefit to under-officers. The work of some under-officers is to inform themselves of the breaches of law and to give information to rulers. They may fail of their duty by neglecting to get knowledge, lest they should be counted busybodies, and by neglecting to give information, either from friendship or from fear, or to prevent trouble. There be other under-officers who are to judge in causes civil and criminal. Their work is to give a verdict. A verdict is verum dictum, a true sentence. And though they are under a necessity to bring in a verdict, yet they are in no snare to act against, against their consciences. If they be all of a mind, their way is fair. If they can't be all of a mind, they must in civil cases bring in for the defendant. In criminal, they must bring in not guilty, for those are negative verdicts. The meaning is, they can't agree to give the case to the plaintiff or to condemn the prisoner. But these men may fail much, when some for quietness do comply with the judgment of others against their own light. So likewise, when they bring in a wrong verdict, from friendship or bribery or credulity, depending on the infallibility of the lawyer that pleads the case. It would be very serviceable for these men to remember the judgment of the last day and the punishment that will be inflicted on ungodly men. Under officers may bring a woe upon themselves, Isaiah 10.1. Under officers may prevent much injustice, John 7.46. 5. It would be a great benefit to buyers and sellers. There is abundance of iniquity in sellers, as when they put off that which is not merchantable. Amos 8, 6. They sell the refuse of the wheat. So when they take advantage of, on the ignorance and necessities of men to exact unreasonably from them, when they go beyond the bounds of truth in commending what they would sell or in telling what it stands them in, there is also abundance of iniquity in buyers, and running down the worth of what they would call, of what they would purchase, in telling that they have bought much cheaper, and that they know they shall lose by it. Proverbs 20, verse 14. It is not, it is not, saith the buyer, but when he goeth away, he boasteth. Some not paying faithfully. Sometimes they promise what they cannot see their way to perform. Sometimes they neglect to pay when they could because they can make advantage of their money. They defraud their creditors. Equivocation is interwoven in the very act of trading. If these men were afraid of hell, they would quickly leave off such methods. Were they sensible what it is to be damned, they would not lie upon the catch and be so injurious one to unto another. They should remember that their gains will eat their flesh as fire. James 5.3 6. It would be a great benefit to young persons. Many young persons take a licentious liberty. Some of them give way to a wanton spirit. They addict themselves to dalliance, don't attend family orders, spend the Sabbath in a profane way. They are devoted to their pride, give themselves up to mirth and jollitry, and neglect the opportunities of salvation. The counsels of parents and warnings of teachers don't sink into their hearts. They hate to live a moping, melancholy life, to be confessing their sins and crying to God for pardon. But if they were afraid of hell, that would make a mighty change in their carriage. A sense of hellfire would soon scare them out of those humors. They would not dare to do what they now are bold to do. They would have no heart to prosecute, prosecute their carnal designs. They would be deaf to temptations. No arguments would prevail with them. They would as soon be persuaded to handle an iron burning hot as to practice their former ways. They would be soon weaned from the world and take up the practice of religion. Ecclesiastes 11.9 Rejoice, O young man, in thy youth, and let thy heart cheer thee in the days of thy youth, and walk in the ways of thy heart, and in the sight of thine eyes. But know thou, that for all these things God will bring thee into judgment. Commentary. That's talking about 
fornicators, young men who are fornicators. And I, I would have to say in 70% of cases today, this is talking about people who look at porn and masturbate. Um, you know, Bible Bible threatens hell on that in Matthew chapter 5. You know, it's not, not a thing that you can, you know, do a little sin here and do a little sin there and you're going to lose your reward and still go to heaven. No, you go to hell. And Jesus warned against it two times in Matthew chapter 5. Um, but, you know, in the, in the 1700s, it was more an issue of actual prostitutes. There was, it was so readily available in the local tavern, you know, let's talk about hardening of the heart. I'm going to continue here. Three, use of exhortation to be afraid of hell. Man is a frightful creature, apt to be afraid of many little evils. Yet by reason of sin, men are so hard-hearted that they are not much afraid of hell. Christ Jesus directs us to be afraid of hell. Matthew 10, 28. Fear him that can cast both body and soul into hell. Especially those that are in a natural estate have reason to be afraid of hell. Isaiah 33, 14. Sinners in Zion are afraid. Trembling takes hold of hypocrites, who among us can dwell with devouring fire, who among us can dwell with everlasting burnings. Some men are much to blame, that they put away the fear of hell. They shun and avoid it what they can. But consider seriously whether you have not abundant cause to fear hell. Consider two things. One, the miseries of hell will be exceeding great. The miseries that have been endured by some in this world have been amazing. It is hard to grapple with the hearing of them, and it must, must be much harder to bear them. But the miseries of hell are far greater. Hebrews 10.31 It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. The apostle, speaking of the glory of heaven, calls it a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. 1 Corinthians 4.17 So we may say of the misery of hell, it is a far more exceeding and eternal weight of misery. Mind here these three things. 1. The persons will be in distress. They rest not day nor night. Their misery will be overbearing to them. There will be no room for any comforts. They will have no ease to comfort them. They will have no hope to comfort them. They will have no peace of conscience to comfort them. They will wish they had not been. They will wish they could cease to be. Their former enjoyments will be no refreshment to them. Their companions in misery will be no refreshing. They must endure suitable revenges for all their rebellions and the contempt that they have cast upon God. They will be standing monuments of the vengeance of heaven. Romans 2, 8-9 God will render indignation and wrath, tribulation and anguish. If their strength were the strength of stones, or their flesh of brass, they could not endure their misery. They will have anguish of spirit, not know what in the world to do. There will be dreadful wailing. Matthew thirteen forty two. They will lament their sins. They will bewail the loss of opportunities. They will condemn their folly. They will curse themselves. They will wish they had never seen such things as now their hearts dote upon. Their cry will go up to heaven. They will wish they had no senses. Their hearing and seeing and feeling will be their misery. Their memory, their understanding, their conscience will be their torment. They will wish they had no bodies and wish they had no souls. Their bodies and souls will be vessels of wrath. Two. These miseries are set forth by doleful comparisons. No comparison can fully set forth the miseries of hell, because those miseries do exceed all others. But some other miseries may in an affecting manner represent to us somewhat of the miseries of hell. Hell is a com compared to a dark dungeon, Matthew 8.12. The children of the kingdom shall be cast into outer darkness. So Jude 13, we read that the blackness of darkness is reserved for ungodly men. Jeremiah the prophet was in a sorrowful condition. When cast into the dungeon, it was a dark, miry hole, for he sunk in the mire. Jeremiah 38, 6. When persons are in a dungeon, they are confined and have no liberty. It is always dark and black night. They are cut off from all pleasant enjoyments. They dwell in the shadow of death. A dungeon is next to a grave. There is the light is as darkness. Again, it is compared to Sodom when it was all on a light of fire. Revelation 
they shall have their part in the lake that burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. The people were in a miserable condition when streams of fire and brimstone fell from heaven upon their houses and upon their ground and upon their bodies, men, women, and children, all like light torches, their bodies blazed. How did they scream out and roar in that extremity? So hell is compared to the valley of the son of Hinnom, where they burnt their children to Molech. Hence hell is called Gehenna, the land of Hinnom, Matthew 5.29. So it is set forth by Tophet, Isaiah 30, verse 33, which is the same place. There they burnt them as sacrifices to the devil, and made a noise with trumpets and other instruments, that they might drown the noise of the cries of the poor children, that they could not bear their roarings. Hell is worse than all these. Commentary. Why did they do it? So that they could commit sexual immorality and orgies and threesomes. That's why they sacrificed and burned their children alive. 3. Whatever the miseries in hell be, they will be eternal. These miseries will never have an end. Life will have an end. This and that kingdom will have an end. The captivity of Babylon had an end. The rejection of the Jews will have an end. And the world will have an end. Matthew 25, 36. These shall go away into everlasting punishment. Mark 9, 44. There the worm dieth not. There the fire is not quenched. The duration of their misery cannot be measured. We may measure the breadth of of the earth and the circuit of heaven, but can't measure eternity. Add thousands to thousands and multiply millions by millions. Fill choirs of paper with numbers and you can't measure eternity. It cannot be divided into days or years or ages. Make never so many parts of it, one will be eternal. When men have suffered never so long, there is an eternity remaining. It don't grow shorter and shorter. This makes every part of their misery infinite. Their pain will be infinite, the terror infinite. If miseries end, there is an opportunity for comfort afterwards, but eternity cuts off opportunities for comfort. Men will well say, who can dwell with everlasting burnings? Two, consider, it is a difficult thing to escape hell. It may be avoided, and there be a number of men that do escape it, but they are but few. It is a difficult thing to bear damnation and a difficult thing to attain salvation. God has made a way of escape, but very few will comply with it. It is very cross to nature. It suits the glory of God, but it don't suit men's humors. Matthew 7:14. Few there be that find it. 1. Many that take pains to escape it do not. Many men make attempts to escape, escape it, but are not successful. Men are like prisoners, bound with chains, and cannot make their escape themselves. Many went out of Egypt that never reached Canaan. Some that endeavor to escape meet with disappointments and difficulties, and are discouraged. They are scared with the anakims and high walls and grow heartless. Some of them get into a wrong way. They get a dead faith and hope that will, that, that will serve their turn. They have somewhat like conversion and take it to be a conversion. It passes among men and they hope it will stand when they appear before God. They have got a righteousness, but it doth not exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees. Some others there be that after they have put away their sins and reformed their lives, do return to their vomit again. And some go on seeking till they are surprised with death. Death comes upon them before they have got through their work. There is great odds in the number of them that seek and of them that find. Luke 13, 24. Many seek and are not able to enter. 2. Many that think they have escaped it will not. Many men are ignorant, rash, and foolish, and so not very capable to pass judgment on themselves. Their judgment is worth very little and in hundred other cases. But indeed, wise men may easily be deceived partly because of the similitude that is between false grace and true. I have read of a painter that pictured grapes so exactly that the birds were deceived by them and took them for real grapes. There is indeed a great difference between true grace and false, but there is also such a similitude that wise men may be mistaken. 
Men are frequently mistaken in silver and in jewels, so if they look upon persons at a distance, they are easily mistaken in them. So especially when they look upon religious actions that have been performed formerly. One great thing that exposes men to judge amiss is that they are some way or other prejudiced, partly from pride, partly from fear, partly from love of ease, partly from a dependence on the opinion of others, and many are deceived. Proverbs 30 verse 12, there is a generation that are pure in their own eyes, yet are not cleansed from their filthiness. Revelation 3 verse 17, thou sayest thou art rich and increased in goods and hast need of nothing and knowest not that thou art poor and miserable and wretched and blind and naked. 3. Many whom the world blesses as if they would escape it will not. Many Men are not competent judges of others. Men may have foundation enough for a judgment of charity, but they have no foundation for a judgment of certainty. Men may be very censorious of real saints, as Job's friends were. They may judge hardly of saints because of their infirmities and because of their own prejudices. So many have the reputation of saints that are not saints. Revelation 3.1 Thou hast a name that thou livest and art dead. Men have nothing but external things to judge by, which are separable from grace. Sometimes they take gifts for grace, but many have the gift of prayer that have not the spirit of prayer. Sometimes men take common grace for special. Zeal and affection may be in men destitute of grace. Sometimes they take a religious conversation for a holy conversation. All that they judge by are but probable signs, and twenty probabilities will not make a thing certain. Probabilities may make a thing legally certain, but not infallibly so. Where there be but probabilities, there is a possibility of the contrary. Many probabilities make a thing more probable, but they do not amount to a demonstration. Some of the wisest of men have been mistaken. David was mistaken in Ahithophel, the disciples in Judas, the church of Jerusalem in Nicholas of Antioch. No man can look into the heart of another and see there a spirit of love and faith. 1 Samuel 16, 7 Man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. 